Hello and welcome back to our action RPG series. In the last episode we set up the movement of our character to use WSD as well as a click to move and we talked about the difference of using the character and controller to handle movements. Now in this episode we're going to go through the process of handling the idea of holding down a key in order for us to uh, boot ourselves into place and then using the click and drag motion to turn our character on the spot. So let's get started and take a look at how this is achieved. Okay, so in the last part we did the basics of our movement where we can click and uh, click the mouse to move or we can use WSD to intersect and start moving our character on their own. But now we're going to do it so we can route our character to position. So basically I want it to look at my mouse and aim with the mouse when I'm holding down the shift key. So it's going to stand still. Basically. Um, so let's hold down the shift key first of all. So let's go ahead and do the input for the routing. So we create a new input. And we do IA root character. And in here, we're going to add, or not in here, sorry, we're then going to go, oops, stop, into the default context. And where we then click, we're going to add another one to it. And this will be the root character. And we use shift for this one. Save that, close that. So now I'm going to go to my controller again. And I'm going to go and do IA root character. And you can do this in the contro uh, controller or the character really. It doesn't matter too much. Um, but this will also work in the case of this one being AI driven as well. So if you're not doing the AI part, you can just put on the character. Um, but this should make it a little bit easier to handle it on the controller if you're doing what I'm doing here with your AI and player input. So the root character one is quite simple really. We're going to tell our character to have zero movement. Okay, They're going to have no uh, walkable speed whatsoever. So root character, and it's a held down button by the way, so when it is started it will set it and when it's completed it will unset it. So I've started here, we're going to take our player controlled character reference and then from the player controlled character we're going to get the component by class, and we're going to get the character movement component. So this is a method of getting a component if it's the only one on the actor. Um, and especially without having to cast it or anything like that, you can just do this. And this will just get the component for character movement. And then from there, I can do set uh, movement mode to none. And have it on started. And I'm going to do it again for completed and change it to walking and target will plug in the same one there. So hit compile, save that and then go into the game. And if I hold down shift and then push WASD, nothing happens. Okay, if I let go of shift and I click a move, I can do stuff. Shift, can't do anything. Let go of shift, I can now move. And when I click, move, and I hold down shift, my character will lock into place where they are. Okay. So, that's the routing done. The next part is to make it so you can follow the mouse cursor. Now, we only want it to follow the mouse cursor whilst we're holding down the button. We don't want it to be like um, always following the mouse cursor. Otherwise, it'll look a bit weird. It'll be more like a stick, twin stick shooter, which we don't want. So what we're going to do here is go back to our controller and go up to our IA click for triggered over here. Okay. Now, when we click once, we're getting the branch code through or near. But what we actually want to do is do click and hold. And click and hold be determined differently from the IA click. So on this click here, we're going to do a... Uh, a, a different type of mapping on our input. So if I go to the input session and go to the default here and go to click, open this up, and we have triggers. And we go to trigger. And down here we've got hold and hold and released, pressed and so on. So if I do um, hold, for example, this will now trigger when it's being held. And I've got a threshold for how many times it can be held um and so forth okay so this is what we're going to be doing we're going to make that held there and we're going to go back to my controller 
And to determine whether it's a click or a hold, what we're going to do is we're going to take from the expanded options here, the elapsed seconds or triggered seconds. Okay. So this bit is actually going to go on the completed. So as soon as I end the click, when I let go of it, mouse, let go of the mouse button, it's going to treat it as a click. But only when the elapsed seconds or triggered seconds rather is over a certain amount. Okay, you can see this happening. If I go completed here and do print string and plug in, say, triggered se seconds, this will tell you how long it was triggered for. Okay. Not point 0.8. Yeah. Hold down more. 1.9. Okay, so it tells you how long it's been triggered for. Uh, one point to note though, if I do it click quickly, nothing happens. So the problem with that is, is on our context, we've got this hold time threshold of one, but actuation threshold of one, uh, no, no, sorry, 0 0.5 seconds. So it means it has to be at least 0 0.5 seconds in order for you to determine it was a held down. Now I still want to take count of 0 0.5 seconds, but I still want it to respect a not like a less than that click. So what happens when you let go of the button before 0 0.5 seconds is it causes canceled pin. So if I plug this also into this print string, it will now trigger for both. Okay, and you can see that now. If I go back in, hit play, just click once, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0. But if I hold down for longer than that, 0 0.5, it goes in. Now, if I want to register the value other than zero, I just change it from using trigger seconds to elapsed seconds because it's not being triggered until it's 0 0.5 seconds. But elapsed will trigger those values before then. See? And we get less. So I want to know if this thing was cancelled, it will do this stuff. So if I take out the print string here and put cancelled onto this branch there, um, we're then going to do the held down button to change its rotation to match our control rotation of our mouse. So now on what we can do on the triggered is tell our character to follow the location that we set underneath the result from cursor. So I'm going to do another hit result from cursor and break I'm going to copy that and put that in here. Let's make some more space. And put that onto triggered. Which remember it will only happen after 0 0.5 seconds if we do this. We're then going to take the break hit result and I want the location. Okay. And I want to get the location, and also I want to get the location of the player controlled character. Get to location. And from here, I want to get the, uh, or not get, sorry, find, look at, rotation. So this will be the start point, and the target will be our mouse hit point here. So location goes down to there. And then it gives us a rotator. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this open. So I don't want it to follow the roller pitch. I just want the yaw. So if I take out the player controlled character here, set rotation, active rotation. And with it split, I'm just going to plug in the yaw into there. Okay, and that now goes to this triggered. Okay, so back to the game now. And if I hold down shift and hold down left click, my character will now turn to face my mouse. And if I let go of it, they won't anymore. Okay, but we also want it to not do this while we're moving. So we only want to do it when we're locked down because it looks weird otherwise. So let's go back to our player character. Or a character uh, controller, sorry. And we only want to do this if we're locked down. So let's do an is rooted boolean down here. So let's do a variable is character rooted. And we're going to set that to true when we set the movement mode to none. And we're going to set to false when we set to walk in. And I'll just go back up to my click event when I'm doing a rotation. And on the true here, we just want to add to this condition 
whether the couch is rooted or not. So do and boolean for those two conditions there. Okay, and we can tidy this up like so. So now, if I hold down the button, nothing happens unless I'm rooted. Okay, so hold down the root, and now it'll work. Let go of the root, and now I can move around. And there we have it. We've now got movement now down in our action RPG. Now the next part of our action RPG series, we're going to go through the process of adding abilities such as spells and combat abilities, like swinging swords and stuff into our game these are both both on the hotkeys and on an action bar at the bottom of the screen as well so let's get started with that next episode you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash ryan laley where my videos are released early from just one dollar a month you can watch those and i also want to say thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support in me and the channel if you're watching this and you're not yet subscribed hit that subscribe button it all goes and helps us on the algorithms on youtube so thank you so much for everyone who subscribed thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time bye everyone